Are you someone who's stuck with understanding how to structure databases? Maybe databases are new to you and you're still trying to figure out different ways, or you're coming up against seeing the same content throughout your databases over and over again. And when you make an update, you have to update it in maybe three, four, five, ten 10 different places. If that is you, then in this video, I'm going to show you how you can structure your databases in a much easier way. So you become more of a professional so you can do it at expert level. And the reason why you want to do this is because you can alleviate so many different building techniques when it comes to structuring your, your databases. But you can also then streamline how you actually build these databases as well. And by the end of the video, you'll be able to understand this schema here that I have for one of our more advanced databases that we have for our content creation AI automation workflows. So let's dive in and we're going to talk about a smarter way to organize your data so that it cuts out any unnecessary repetition and keeps things effortless. So first, let's dive into learn how to make your information work together beautifully without extra effort. So if I show you that uh, database here that we had on this schema here that we have for a content workflow, the bare bones of that is simply four foundational databases and then two creation databases for the creation part of the workflow. So how that looks for us is what I call a foundational database, which is something that um, is goes account wide when it comes to a certain record within the database itself. So how we use this practically is we have databases for our AI models. We have databases for our AI image models. We have databases for our brand assets, like our brand voice guidelines and our excluded words, our writing grade level and so forth. We put all of these into a single database so that any type of automation we then build in future, all we need to do is link to that first database to pull that information like the brand voice, and we can use that then in all of the other databases moving forward. So why is that important? The reason why that is important is if you have a brand voice guideline in database number one, then you have just a separate field in database number two. Then if you have to make an update to your brand voice, you have to now update in two different locations. But by structuring these databases the right way, when you update it in one field, it should update all across the board in every field as well. So we're going to talk about that in a moment, but you may be getting a little bit confused. So let's just bring this back to a very simple type of example where I'll give you an example of like some video game reviews. So we have three different games here that we might want to review and we have our dates here and we have what type of content they are. So that would be like our pillars, for example. We have our status here, and then we have an outline of like the headline, let's call it for that particular review. And then let's say we extrapolate that down with hundreds of more games, then we might repeat some of these same things over and over again. So this would be how you would normally structure your database if it was a simple database, if you didn't have a whole lot of things going on. So when it comes to content creation, for example, like writing reviews in this example, a lot of people might start to organize things by date by doing things like putting January here, putting Feb here. So this is like your typical spreadsheet type of thing to do where you'd have like, hey, this is a content I want to achieve in this month. This is what I want to achieve in the next month and so forth. So it could be done that way, but that means you're going to have to create new databases or tables all the time. Whereas a better way to do it inside of a database tool like Airtable is we can just simply create a view based on the date field right here. So if we wanted to create a date field, for example, we could open up a new grid and create the same grid, but then filter it by where our date is on or after the exact date of the 1st of the 1st, January, and is on or before the final date of January. That will then create a view for January without having to rebuild an entire table again in a different part of the, the database itself. So then we could go and repeat that for all of the months of the year, and then we can have our full content planned out. Plus, we can then see our entire year here from this first view as well. So that would be one way to structure your data in a much more simplified way using smarter field organization, which is not building things over, over and over again, but use building the one system one time and then using our views as a way to filter down that particular set of information, whatever that based on whatever variable or filter that you wish. So that's number one. Number two, we then talk about linked records. 
So there are a lot of things happening here where this content type, if we use this same headline for each of these content types, then once we have, you know, I, I could just add these in here again, it's probably not going to be the most ideal situation, but let's just say that we did all of this again, that and you can imagine if we had a full list of these different tools, then we're actually repeating this multiple times um, to get to these. So we have to copy and paste a lot of things a lot of the time. Whereas what we can actually do is something called a linked record. And a linked record is simply creating a table just like this, that if we change this headline in one location, it will update that everywhere. So how do we do that? First, if we right click on this uh, field headline here, and then we'll just go insert, right? And then we just want to link to another record. So if I go link to content type, and we just want to link one, so we don't want new and noteworthy and bestsellers in the one, we just want that one time. And we're just going to call this content type, and we'll call this the linked version. So we can go create field now, and we'll come back to that later, but we can skip that. So over here in my content type table, I have all of these same fields and headlines, right? So what we can do is we can add our new and noteworthy here. We can add our best sellers here. We can add our most popular. So now we need to then link the same outline as what we have over here. And we call this the template here so that it gives the right headline as well. So if I go to add lookup fields, and then if I go template, we can now pull that in automatically. So I can't, I can't edit that, but it's exactly the same as what we have going on over here, right? So I would delete that field now because we don't actually need it. We can just pull our status back to where it was. So every time now, let's say that I want to change this one to the to the bestseller. If I add in bestseller here, it then immediately pulls in that template or that headline into the final section automatically. Then let's say I want to change the headline for that uh, bestseller option. And we want to do five reasons why. If I update that just one time here, and we come back into our reviews, we can now see that's updated everywhere in one go. So this is what we call a linked record. And it's a great way to centralize all of your key data. So if we come across to our more advanced version now, so like I said, some of our key data that we have in here, which you can see is linked to other databases are things like our brand voice guidelines. So anytime we're using AI, we wanna tell it, how we communicate, are we an authority, are we funny, are we cheeky, are we uh, scientific? Like we want to use those things. We, we give it a writing grade level as well. So this is then linked into our content creator dashboard so that when we trigger an automation from uh, our content creator dashboard, we can send in this writing grade level. Uh, and if we need to update that across all of our workflows, then we just need to up update it from one single location. So in order to get this view here, this is just simply called a base schema. So, so Airtable make that really easy. If you come across into extensions and we go to add an extension, we can open up this base schema here. And let's do that. Base schema will go, uh, I mean, it's asking me to update the plan, which uh, this database must be on a different account. But basically it'll open up this and now it will show us the schema of how all of these are interrelated or linked together uh, using this schema tool. It's basically just a flowchart and mind map to see where everything is linked. And if you hover over each of these sections, it will show you where it's linked. So for example, we have a database here of our AI models. So when we are bringing in our AI models, we have our code for open router. We have some max tokens. We have a temperature. We have all of these different sections here that we need to push into our um, automations all the time. So we send, we link all of these records together with the different parts of the database that it needs to be. And then the final part that becomes very important when structuring your databases is what we call the primary field here. So the primary field when we start linking records is what will show up inside of your linked databases. So we want to make sure that this is a name or an ID that needs to be unique. So how do we do that? So in this example, we've created a formula field here and we're using the date string and the game name to give it a different, a unique field. So that if we are saying Grand Theft Auto 6 in two sections here, then we can still, I mean, it actually says the same date. So like, let's say this was a different date. So if we have the same name of content in here twice, but it has a different date as to when it was launched, 
then it's a unique identifier, right? So there's so many different ways that you could do that. For example, inside of our content automation OS templates that we sell for businesses to automate their workflows with AI, we have our, a prompt library. So our prompt name is a unique identifier, which takes in the prompt type, it takes in, takes in the prompt ID, and it takes in the product type as well. So that we have a very unique name, which is, it's very clear that this is for YouTube content. It helps create YouTube title ideas and it's for the content marketing um, part of the process. So then we can have these unique IDs at the start of our tables in order to make sure that it's very clear as to what record contains what. And just like I've shown you here, probably the best way to create a unique ID is by using the formula field. So if you don't know formulas, you can easily just use ChatGPT to help you write them, but you can just take our, your existing fields within that table and turn them into a unique ID for your databases as well. So now when you look at a base schema like this, you can see how it's actually not as complicated as, as it first looks. It's all just about thinking from a systems design point of view. And that's something that I teach about inside of the Massive Moves membership, which you, which you can check out on our website, where we need to think when we're building databases, when we're building automations, when we're building our AI workflows, whatever that is, we need to think from a systems point of view. How does all of the information connect? We don't wanna just think about automations or workflows in a silo. We wanna think about how that fits into the bigger picture of the business because for example, almost every workflow we build inside of our business contains our brand assets, it contains the prompt library, it contains the AI models, it contains the AI image models. Not just the content creator flow, not just the AI output flow. We have product workflows that help us launch products. We have social media workflows that help us post to social media. We have a whole bunch of project planning workflows as well. So it's using a, a whole lot of these initial tables and we're just linking those records so that it makes it so much faster to build so that if we update the information in one place, it updates everywhere throughout the database and so that we can build much smarter workflows inside of our businesses using these tools in a much more advanced way. So that was three principles for structuring databases inside of tools like Airtable and other database tools as well. If you are interested in diving into more of this type of education, we do have the Massive Moves membership and you'll find more about that on our website. So for now, that is all for me and I'll see you in the next video.